Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're back in the OWASP top 10. In fact, today we're at the very end of the list. We finally made it to the very end. This is the number 10 security risk on the 2017 list. And this security risk is entitled insufficient logging and monitoring. Uh, it's interesting that they mentioned both of those on this uh, security risk, logging and monitoring. They're definitely connected, but they're kind of two different things. You know, you can think of logging as when you have an issue or an event uh, that takes place in your web application, then you create a log event for that. Monitoring is where you need to take the extra step to monitor those logs. So it's not good enough just to log. You got to look at the logs and we'll talk through that a little bit. Uh, but before you can look at the logs, you've got to make sure your logs are set up correctly. So we're going to talk about insufficient logging and monitoring today and how you can, uh, how you can guard against uh, making that an issue for your web application. All right, so let's say, uh, you know, we've talked a lot of uh, examples along the way, but let's say you have your web application here. So I'm going to put web app and it's awesome and people visit this thing every day and they love it. Um, so you've got users coming in, you know, and it's built with all these different components and we've talked about all these things on the top 10 list along the way. Um, but in terms of logging and monitoring, uh, we'll talk about logging first. Let's say that you have a user out here and this user uh, tries to log in to your web application. And let's say there is a failed login. So I'm going to put failed login. All right, well, that would be one event that you would want to potentially log. So I'm going to say when something like that happens in the context of your web application, that's going to that's create an event or that will be an event. So that's going to, I'm going to just put this event here in the web application and that needs to kick off some sort of log entry. All right, so from a very broad context, if, a, if an event happens uh, with respect to your web application that you care about, um, then it needs to kick off some kind of a log and then that log needs to be sent to where it needs to be sent to in the proper format and the proper way and all that. Um, and then, of course, the monitoring part comes in on top of that where you got to have somebody or something that's going to monitor that stuff so that you can take the appropriate action as, as necessary. Uh, okay, so there are, there are certain things when you talk about, all right, well, what do we need to uh, log, you know, in the context of logging, there are several things that you would, wanna, that you would want to log, and I'll, uh, and I'll make a, uh, or, or I'll, I'll tag a link onto this, but just to give you an idea of the OWASP organization has a great um, cheat sheet, as it were, that says, hey, this is a cheat sheet for all the items that you should be, that you should care about with respect to logging. Uh, so anyway, so we'll, uh, we'll link to that, but just so you know, it's out there. A few of them are, uh, certainly fail logging would be one, but any kind of, uh, from, a, from a larger, uh, broader perspective, uh, any kind of warnings that would happen, um, you know, in your web application, um, things like error messages, and I'll just put error messages. Uh, those are things that you would want to log as well. Um, you would want to have uh, alert thresholds. So I'll put alert thresholds uh, set appropriately and effectively. Um, imagine the scenario where, you know, maybe a user tries to log in with this failed login thing again. Um, and you don't have any kind of alert set up or your thresholds are not, are not uh, tuned correctly, uh, then it's not going to kick off any kind of alert or maybe it's not going to, you know, uh, create a log entry uh, to begin with. And so you want to make sure that any kind of log or alert thresholds are tuned properly uh, so that you can, uh, so you can have the, the proper kind of logs. Um, another thing you want to do is you don't want to spill information in these logs so that if an attacker were to try to gain access to the log file itself, then the attacker would not be able to look at that log file because, um, you know, by virtue of, of the, the things that you're trying to log, you're going to log things like, you know, these warnings or fail logins or whatever. Um, imagine an attacker actually getting access to the log file itself and, uh, and being able to read that. Then let's say, for example, the attacker is trying to do something bad and then they can read all your logs. And then they see in the logs that, hey, you're, <coughs> you're checking all these failed logins. Well, then the attacker knows that you're sort of onto him. And then it's like, okay, I need to back off of that. Then they can kind of tune their attack vectors, as it were. So the bottom line on all that is you don't want to have this information from the log file itself 
spilled so that someone else can read it. So as you, as you store the logs or maybe if you send the log files off to some other um, you know, centralized logging system or service, uh, then you want to make sure that you do that securely as well so you don't, uh, you don't give away the log information. Um, just to give you a couple of uh, statistics, or maybe one, one quick statistic, back in 2016, so a couple of years ago, the average time between data breach and actual you know, knowledge of or discovery of the, of the data breach was uh, just over 190 days. That's over six months. So I guess from a strict time perspective, um, over half of the data breaches that we found out about in 2016 didn't even happen in 2016. They happened you know, way before that. Um, the, the issue there, of course, is that these, these data breaches are happening, these attacks are happening, and we just have no idea that they're even out there for, for months. So, I mean, these attackers are just having their way with these web applications for months and months uh, before we even have a clue that they're in there. So, we need to shorten that time to discovery, and, uh, and then that way our web applications will be a whole lot safer. We can certainly respond a lot quicker, and that's what we want to do. Um, just to give you one scenario of, of how an attacker may come in and attack your web application where this logging and monitoring would come into play is let's say, for example, you have an attacker who either has access to your usernames, maybe a list of usernames on your web application, or they're guessing the usernames, um, either way, then they can run a scan against your web application for possible passwords. And so they can use maybe common passwords, um, or you know, some kind of a dictionary attack, whatever, that would be like, hey, let me try to do some commonly used passwords against this web application using the usernames that I either have or that I'm guessing. Um, so let's say that they do that. And let's say that out of, I don't know, out of, let's say they have a thousand of these things. And out of a thousand, they get a hundred of them um, that they're successful in, in, in matching password with username. Then that's a great, well, it's great for them. It's not good for your web application. Uh, so then at that point, they can legitimately log in with those usernames. But the other thing is, on the other 900, um, they would only have guessed that password one time against each of those other 900 that they were unsuccessful with. So it would have created a failed login, um, but it would only create one failed login attempt on your web application for that specific username. So what you should be doing at that point is if, those, if that was logged, then maybe, maybe on one hand you would say, well, there's only one failed login attempt. Is that a big deal? But when you look at it in the aggregate, if you look at it collectively, then you'll see, hey, all these were failed logins, you know, maybe in a very short amount of time, or you could start to see the patterns there, and that's why you need to monitor your logs. So, uh, so not only log, but monitor. And if you do that insufficiently, which is this security risk, then you run into problems. Um, okay, so that's just one little scenario that could happen. The, uh, the thing that you want to, to keep in mind, and I'll just mention a few things in terms of defending against this and things that you ought to be logging and monitoring for, keeping in mind as you go through this, is the, uh, any, kind of, any kind of login failure or uh, access control failure or server-side validation failure. Um, those things need to be logged, and of course they need to be monitored. But they also need to have sufficient user content so that you can actually take action against them. So I'll just make a little list of things that you need to consider when you log. So I'll say uh, sufficient, sufficient um, content. Alrighty, so when you create that log file, you want to make sure it has enough content so that when you come back and monitor it, then you'll know what's going on in that thing. Um, you want to have, uh, I'm going to say good uh, format. All right, or usable format. And basically what this means is that, you know, you can have all kinds of different formats when it comes to log files. Um, let's say that you have security logs and you have other user, you know, user type, uh, you know, access logs or whatever it is. Then you want to make sure that all those are in a proper format so that when you compile those together, or if, again, you're using some kind of centralized, you know, logging service, then, then they need to be in a format that's, that's easily consumable, that's in a good format, that that service can read all of the different types of logs. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, one of the things in terms of content, content that I'll mention uh, again is that too much content is not a good thing and too little content is not a good thing. If you have too much, then you could fill up these log files like crazy quick 
and uh, or you just use tons and tons of space, and and you may get just you may just get drowned in all the data that you have. Likewise, if there's too little, then you're going to look at it later and you're going to say, "I have no idea what's going on here because there's not enough information to take action against." Uh, so, it's there's an art to this. There's a balancing act between too much and too little. I guess personally, what I would say is maybe maybe lean a little more toward the hey, let me let me do a little more content than I need, and I can always back off of that a little bit if there's too much, if it's filling up too quick. Um, you certainly don't want the you don't want the scenario where you try to come in and you say, hey, let me take action, and I just have no clue what's going on in this log because there's not enough information there. I would say another thing that you need to uh, consider is integrity controls. And I'll just write this, integrity controls. And this gets back to the uh, situation I mentioned earlier where you, uh, if you're going to send your log files off, especially kind of high, high value transactional logs, then you want to make sure that there's some sort of integrity controls or integrity checks on the log file itself so that if you send it from your web application to some external source or even, you, even if you store it locally, um, if that log file ever gets changed, then you want to know that that has been changed, that that data has been compromised. The integrity of the data has, has, is not there anymore and you certainly want to know that. Uh, that means there's something crazy going on, some nefarious actor doing something crazy. So put some integrity controls in place on your log files. And then uh, finally, I'll put, um, I'll just put a response plan. Response plan. And this one is really critical as well. And the, the essence of this is that, let, let's say that you've got your logs, you've figured out exactly what you want to log, you've run that checklist that I talked about a second ago, uh, you've, you've looked at all these different things that you need to consider with format, integrity control, the, the right amount of content. You've got all that. Now, like I said, you need to monitor those. So whether it's a person that you've hired that just goes through all these logs all the time or maybe you've, maybe you've automated that, whatever it is, um, you need to be monitoring these logs and it needs to happen all the time. It, this needs to be a regular thing that you do is monitor these logs. You don't want to be one of those 191 days. It's like, hey, it's been 191 days. I finally got around to checking the logs and we've been breached, you know, six months ago. Um, anyway, so you have monitored these things. Now it's time to respond to the thing. <clears throat> so some people may say, hey, I just found out about this big data breach that we had and I checked the logs, I monitored them, I found out about them, now what in the world do I do with it? You know, so some people are kind of in that spot where they just have no clue what to do next. That's where you need to have a response plan in place, like an incident response plan, a disaster recovery kind of a plan. And that's something that you can talk about prior to all this or kind of outside, outside of setting all this up. You can say, hey, wh when this happens, if this happens, what are we going to do and what are the steps that we're going to take? So people need to be aware of that. Uh, the right people that are doing these things need to be aware of this plan and then they need to follow that plan if and when the incident happens. So hopefully you won't be the victim of one of these, but chances are if you have a web application, people are going to come attack it at some point. So better to be prepared than to uh, you know be caught completely off guard and you have no idea what to do. So. Um, so thanks for sticking in there with us on this OWASP Top 10. Thanks for watching the uh, insufficient logging and monitoring uh, light board that we did today. And hey, if you like this one, you can, uh, you can click the little DC ball up here and subscribe to our Dev Central YouTube channel. And we will see you guys out there in the community.